Welcome back, working on the second of the Hazeltine 2000 smart terminals. I've been through this second chassis, tested the power supply, carried out quite a few mechanical repairs. There was a lot of um, bent pieces of chassis, brackets, all sorts of things were uh, bent. Relocated the capacitor and it's now time to start reassembling the units, putting the boards back in and seeing if this will work. Uh, my plan for this is actually to put all the boards in at once. I'm not going to uh, test them one by one as I did with the first chassis. I have been testing the boards as I've been repairing the first chassis. So in theory, they should all work. You can't be sure until you get them all fitted and see what happens. Um, but that's my plan. I'm going to refit them. I can be fairly confident that no serious damage should occur. Uh, simply because um, all the boards have already been put into the first chassis and uh, they work fine. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is replace or fit new um, mounting posts for the CRT. The ones that are in there are either broken or missing, so that they just clip into place. So I'll just put those in first. Okay, so that's those fitted. Um, I don't have the CRT out of this unit, so I'm going to swap the CRT from the first unit. Uh, I could, in theory, swap the entire uh, CRT uh, chassis, but because I want to test the uh, driver board, uh, I might as well swap the CRT, and so I've tested the entire system. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is plug all the cards in. So I'll get all these plugged in, and uh, we'll go from there. That's all the boards fitted to the rack. So the next thing I'll do is swap the CRT from the first unit into this chassis, and then we can refit the CRT control board and it will be ready to try and power it up. That's the CRT swapped from the other chassis. Now I just need to fit the CRT control and driver card and we can try and power this chassis up and uh, see what it does. I've got the CRT control and driver card plugged in. Everything is now connected apart from the cooling fan on the back, uh, which is uh, removed at the moment just to keep it out of the way. But all the cards are fitted. I have modified the wiring on this unit, so in theory it should um, be the same as the first one and respond to RS232C um, code or, or protocol. Uh, all the wiring seems to be correct. I can't find any shorts. The voltages are correct when we tested them. They'll probably need adjusting now that we have a load on them. And uh, we have changed some parts, so that's going to have some impact. Uh, but without further ado, we'll get this powered up. I've got it set to half duplex mode. So uh, as usual, we should just see some random garbage appearing on the display. So we'll see if any magic smoke escapes. It's drawing about twice the current of the first one, but that's to be expected, we're on half the voltage. And we are getting something on the screen. I'll just turn the lamp off so you can see a bit more clearly. See if the contrast control works, and it does. I'll try clearing that with the keyboard. And that's a good sign, it means the system is at least running to a certain degree. I'll try hitting some keys. And that's also looking promising. So what I'll do now is uh, switch the unit off, get it connected up through the RS232 to the PC emulator and um, see if we can actually transfer any data. I've now got it connected to the PC terminal emulator, so we'll try and power it back up. Wait till something appears on the screen and then we'll try and send some data and see what happens. Still set to half duplex, I'll try and clear that. Works fine. And we are getting something on the screen here and on the terminal emulator. I'll try and send some data from the PC and we should see it appear on the screen here. And as you can see, that's working fine. So turn the brightness down a bit and we'll try switching to our batch mode. I'll clear the screen again, enter some data and it is coming out in the foreground colour, the foreground brightness. And I'll now try transmitting that and see what happens. And it does indeed work, so that's looking extremely promising. Uh, so far it all seems to be doing what it should. The last thing I'll 
try in this video, clear the screen again, is we'll try and send it the form that I showed in the previous video and see if that works. So we can see this works. This is fairly significant because what it means is that the um, instruction decoder in the system is working because it has to decode the incoming data as either text or instructions to uh, for this to work and it's obviously working fine. So what we can do now is try and make use of this. So we'll press the home key, tab, and see if we can fill the form in, which we can. Okay, and we'll try and send that. And that again works fine. It is appearing on the terminal emulator. So just turn the light back on. So it looks like this unit's working so far. I'll obviously do a lot more testing on this, but uh, it looks like it is up and running. Uh, so far, all the functions are working. And once you get this far and it's interpreting commands and uh, obviously storing the data in memory, then you're fairly close to having a fully functional machine. So looking very good. Um, in the next video, we'll go into this in a bit more detail, have a look at the finished enclosure for this unit. We've already seen the first one and then try and get this unit finished off.